Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? It's fairly well known that ThinkPad laptops have a strong following, and some models are very well regarded by their owners. This time, let's take a look at a machine from 2007 that's perhaps one of the most appreciated of them all. I was given a Lenovo ThinkPad X61 by my friends over at FreeGeek Twin Cities. It was missing a couple of parts, but otherwise was functional and in fantastic cosmetic condition. Given the lack of scratches or wear, it doesn't seem to have been moved around much. Which is kind of unfortunate, because the X61 is a sub-notebook that was considered an excellent traveling companion during its time. The model launched in the middle of 2007 with a solid set of specifications. It features an Intel Core 2 Duo CPU with options ranging from 1.8 to 2.5 GHz. The left side of the machine has ports for USB 2.0, VGA and Gigabit Ethernet, along with PC and SD card slots. Along the right side are jacks for audio in and out, two more USB ports, and a 4-pin Firewire 400 interface, which is an interesting addition. The only remaining connectors are the power input socket and a 56K modem port on the back corner. The X61 is a very compact machine, with a 12-inch TFT display running at 1024 by 768. Neither content creation nor gaming were priorities for this laptop, so that panel is driven by integrated Intel X3100 graphics. This ThinkPad was, like many others, instead geared primarily for business productivity. Road Warriors loved it for its light weight of about 3 pounds or 1.4 kilograms and its rated battery life of up to 8 hours, though of course under real usage this was a bit less. ThinkPads are known for their solid keyboards, and this one is perhaps the best I've ever felt on a laptop. Clicky and without any noticeable flex. And while it's a bit smaller than on full-size laptops, it doesn't feel cramped to type on. An interesting feature is a pair of drain holes on the bottom. The idea is if you spill a drink into the keyboard, the liquid can drain out and hopefully not damage any electronic components inside. This is something I'm not too keen on actually testing, though. One feature the machine is lacking is a touchpad. While Lenovo had been adding them to ThinkPads for a few years at this point, the reason why the X61 is missing one is pretty clear. There just isn't the space. If they had tried to cram a touchpad into the palm rest, it would have ended up comically small and unusable. Thankfully, the track point on this machine works fine, even though it's not my preference. But to get the machine working at all, I needed to throw a few parts at it. It came to me without any RAM, so I dug out a few modules. The X61 uses DDR2 clocked at 667 MHz, and I installed a pair of 2 gig SO DIMMs. Officially, 4 gigabytes is the maximum this machine can handle, but that specification was written when the largest modules available were 2 gigs. Later, when 4 gig sticks came out, X61 owners found that they could actually support 8 gigabytes total with no issues. I also needed to supply a hard drive, though thankfully both the drive caddy and mounting screws had been kept with the machine. Originally, the X61 shipped with a mechanical drive ranging in size from 80 to 250 gigabytes, though I opted to install a 128 gig SATA SSD. I powered the machine on and entered the BIOS settings to check out what it was reporting. This one has a Core 2 Duo T7250 at 2 gigahertz, a solid mid-range option for its time. And unlike the last time I checked out a retro ThinkPad, all of the RAM I installed was detected without a problem. Even though the X61 shipped with either Windows XP or Vista, I decided to install Windows 7. Given that OS launched only two years later, I think it would have been a common upgrade for owners of this model. 
The installation went quickly thanks to that SSD, and then I could install a few updates and drivers. Out of curiosity, I decided to run some drive benchmarks, but ended up with lackluster results compared to what the SSD was capable of. The reason why is quite interesting. Like a lot of other ThinkPads, the X61 supports connecting to a docking station. Because the machine doesn't have a built-in optical drive, a spot for one was included in the dock. This is called the Ultra Bay, and it supports a variety of hot swappable drives. One of which was an adapter to install a second hard drive. But due to technical limitations, it would only work with 1.5 gigabit SATA 1 controllers. The chipset in the X61 is capable of 3 gigabit SATA 2 speeds, but Lenovo restricted it in the BIOS to the slower protocol in order to maintain compatibility with that particular drive module. At the time, this had minimal impact on users as SSDs were fairly rare and expensive and mechanical laptop drives couldn't really max out the interface anyway. But for the diehards trying to get the most life out of their X61s, it presented a major bottleneck. In 2010, one particular ThinkPad user decided to tackle the issue. Going by the nickname Middleton, they released unofficial BIOS updates for a variety of models that removed the Wi-Fi card whitelist, allowed switching the control and function keys, and most importantly, unlocked SATA 2 performance. I decided to give the update a go, but ran into a few issues. There's an update program available for Windows, but the installation notes made it clear that it only works on 32-bit versions. I had gone with a 64-bit OS to take full advantage of the system's 4 gigabytes of RAM. An alternative was to burn a bootable CD from an included disk image file, which I did but that failed to work properly as the CD-ROM drivers weren't compatible with my USB optical drive. So next I swapped the SSD for another one to which I can install a 32-bit version of Windows 7. That process went smoothly as I'd expected and the BIOS update program launched without any problems. But when it got to the point where it was about to flash the new file, it threw an error and didn't complete the process. Finally, I decided to just build my own bootable USB flash drive using FreeDOS. I ran the update utility and it seemed like it was working, but definitely was taking its time. After about five minutes, an error popped up about an invalid opcode, and then it just sat there. After 20 minutes, it hadn't done anything further, and I figured it was stuck. I had no choice but to power the machine off and hope that it hadn't gotten bricked. Thankfully, it powered back on just fine, and when I went to check in the BIOS, it looked like the update had actually succeeded. It was showing the new version. I did some searching and found that the error I'd seen was likely due to a bug in FreeDOS and not the BIOS update program. Either way, I was relieved I had managed to get the process to work without rendering the laptop useless. So I swapped the SSDs back, and after Windows booted, it detected another ATA channel. I reran the disk benchmarks again, and this time got some very different numbers. Random I.O. had pretty much stayed the same. This makes sense, as that's generally limited by the drive itself. But sequential reads and writes were about double now. The BIOS update had indeed unlocked better performance in the chipset. This SSD is still being somewhat throttled by the SATA 2 interface, but it's hard to complain when the update is free. While hacked BIOS updates are fairly ambitious, they're hardly anything new. But the X61 community managed to take things even further with their machines. One popular modification was to swap out the display with an IPS panel for better image quality sometimes also increasing the resolution to 1400 by 1050. The actual installation wasn't overly difficult, but sourcing the right parts was occasionally a bit hit or miss. But upgrading the screen pales in comparison to what some ThinkPad enthusiasts in China managed to pull off in 2016. They loved the machine's form factor, but wanted modern performance. 
so they designed a replacement motherboard for the X61, along with a couple other classic ThinkPad models featuring all new components. It included 5th gen Intel Core i series CPUs, DDR3 RAM, mSATA storage, USB 3, digital video output, and more. One could buy a pre modded machine, which its sellers called the X62, or just the motherboard alone. Of course, given the low quantities produced, this was a fairly expensive upgrade. Just the new motherboard would sell for about $500 US, but for those enamored with the machine's form factor, it was money well spent. As for this particular X61, I don't have any crazy plans for it. I have other modern computers that I can use for daily tasks. But there's something striking about a sub-notebook that still packs the same performance as its full-size counterparts. Basically, it's the antithesis of netbooks from its time. Maybe I'll dabble with Linux on it. Let me know what distribution you think I should go with, or perhaps even try a retro Hackintosh setup, which some X61 owners were able to pull off. But otherwise, I'm perfectly happy with this ThinkPad as it is. It came at a time of rapid progress for the computer industry, where one finally no longer needed to give up performance or features for the sake of portability. And given that almost 15 years later, it's still the subject of attention from hardware modders and laptop enthusiasts, portability is exactly why the ThinkPad X61 was, and is, so well loved. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.